Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeffrey. I'm the CTO for ITQ, a European-based VMware partner. And on this personal channel, I create content and video tutorials around technology in the VMware ecosystem. Today, we're going to start the rebuild of my VMware nested home lab environment. Now, this will be a pretty big series of videos in which I completely explain the entire process step by step. Consider this a ultimate beginner's tutorial on setting up a VMware home lab environment using nested virtualization. Now make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so you will be updated as soon as I release a new video in this series. I will do my best to complete it as fast as possible, but as you can imagine, this will be quite an extensive process. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we will be fully up and running with the home lab environment again. So stay tuned and keep an eye out on my channel. Thanks. Now, before we dive in, I first want to explain what it means to run a nested home lab environment. If you're already familiar with the concept, feel free to skip ahead. Nested virtualization means nesting a virtual ESXi hypervisor inside of a physical ESXi hypervisor. So we're basically layering virtualization on top of virtualization. It's a bit of a confusing concept. Um, the community also often refers to it as Inception, named after the famous Christopher Nolan movie uh, where they layer dreams, you know, stack layers of dreams on, upon dreams. Uh, with nested virtualization or Inception, we're layering virtualization on top of virtualization. Maybe a small diagram will make it a bit clearer. So as you can see in the drawing, we have a physical ESXi server and inside of that physical ESXi server we install multiple virtual machines in this example we have three of them and they run ESXi so the guest OS of this virtual machine will be the ESXi hypervisor now inside of these virtual ESXi hypervisors we will install our virtual machines running our guest OS's, Windows, Linux, anything you uh, you want, and that's supported by ESXi. So we're nesting virtual ESXi servers inside of a physical ESXi server. Now, the major benefit for me is the space and energy efficiency of this concept. So I really didn't want to run a full rack of servers or anything like that inside of my home office. I was really looking for a low footprint, low energy and low noise solution. And that brought me to, uh, to nested virtualization. Now, running virtual ESXi server also brings a ton of flexibility, as you can imagine. When vSAN was introduced, for example, many VMware enthusiasts running home lab environments with physical hardware, uh, they needed to you know, go out and upgrade their network to 10 gig. They needed to buy new NICs, they needed to buy new switches. Now with nested virtualization, the virtual machines that run ESXi, they are virtual machines, so we can swap out hardware, we can add new uh, VNICs, we can do all the stuff without even touching the hardware. And that brings so much uh, ease of use and ease of manageability to the solution that I'm a big fan of it. And not to forget, almost all traffic stays within that physical box. So all network traffic is forwarded and routed and switched inside of that physical box. So it's done completely in memory, which makes it insanely fast. Only traffic going to my, you know, from the from my home lab environment into my home network or to the internet, that's traffic that's, that will be forwarded and routed on my physical network. Everything else stays inside the box. Now, of course, there is a downside of the added complexity of running nested virtualization. It does require some specific network settings, but once you get the hang of it and you understand the concept, it's really not that much of a downside for me. And you need a pretty beefy server to run a fully nested home lab environment, of course. So I'm running a Xeon eight core system on a chip, so on the SOC, with 128 gigs of RAM. 
Uh, I also added a fast NVMe drive and an additional SSD. So this allows me to over provision like crazy, which means I can allocate much more virtual capacity to my nested ESXi servers than I have available inside of my physical box. Swapping on a fast NVMe drive is fairly doable, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let's start with a closer look of my Supermicro Super Server, which I use to run my fully nested VMware Home Lab environment. So this is my physical server. It's a space efficient compact design, so I can easily store it in my home office. It has an Intel Xeon processor, D1541 system on the chip, an 8 core CPU with 128 gigs of RAM. I also installed an NVMe flash drive and a SATA SSD. It also hosts two 10 gigabit NICs and an IPMI interface for remote management. In my current setup, I'm still booting my home lab using a USB drive. It's good to know that booting from USB should be avoided when possible due to the increased number of writes to the file system as of vSphere 7.0 update 2. I already had one USB drive fail on me, so maybe it would be best to migrate to a SATA DOM device for example, but I don't have that available. Alternatively, I could install ESXi on the NVMe drive and use the remaining capacity as a VMFS data store. Let me know in the comments what you use as a boot device. Now let's move on to create the USB boot device. There are multiple ways to approach this, but let's start with downloading the ISO. If you're a VMware customer or partner, you log on to Customer Connect. If you're a VExpert like me, the VExpert portal is also a good location to download the ISO. If you're running a Windows workstation, something like Rufus would probably be easiest. But I'm running macOS, so I will fire up my terminal to create the USB disk without using any third party tools. Okay, so we're in the terminal and first we need to determine the correct drive number uh, of my USB drive. So this util list will show me that disk number four is actually my USB drive. So make sure to double check this on your system. It might be a different number. So we need to format the disk drive using disk util erase disk and make sure to use the FAT32 uh, disk format by using the ms-dos statement. Now we need to unmount the disk so we can work with it. So now we need to enter uh, fdisk, but you need privileges to do that. sudo fdisk-e with the uh, correct drive number. Make sure to put in your macOS password. Now we need to make the partition active using F space one. Quit fdisk. Now I find it most easy to just launch a finder window and mount the ISO of the uh, file we just downloaded at the uh, customer connect side. So once we mounted the ISO file, we need to copy over the entire content of the ISO file in, onto our USB drive. So that will take a minute. So once everything's copied, we can go back to our terminal and we need to make one final change to the contents of the USB drive. So go to your volumes uh, slash ESXi and use a text editor like VI or text edit, but we need to edit the ISO Linux.cfg file. Once you have it open in VI, for example, it's colon I for insert and you, we need to append dash P space one. You can save the file using colon WQ for write and quit with an explanation mark. And we need to rename the file from ISO Linux.cfg to syslinux.cfg. That's it. You can now Make sure to um, go to a different directory so the, file, the drive is unlocked. You can unmount it using the final window. So this concludes part one of the video series. I explained the concept of nested virtualization. I showed you guys what hardware kit I used and we created our bootable USB drive, which we can now use to completely reinstall the super micro server that I have running. So I hope this was informative to you. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button. And keep an eye out for the next video where we will reinstall the home lab server. Thanks for watching.